Hello everyone, Instagram Lee and Friends. My name is Kai Speaks, aka Mr. Cheney, aka the host with the most, aka Mr. 215 to 305. Welcome and thanks for tuning in to Talented Tuesdays. This is the first official episode of Talented Tuesdays, airing every Tuesday at 8 p.m. on your Instagram live station. I guess we can call it a station. Yeah, I mean, I guess it'll work. A uh, few ground rules before I introduce our, our guest here tonight. I just want to mention right there below is the comment section. Feel free to comment and ask questions that I may not get to. Um, if you feel as though I didn't ask her some, something that you really wanted to know about them, ask that question below and I'll try and get to it to ask, uh, ask away. Also, following with that uh, comment, the comment section is also to be left for positive and encouraging comments and questions leave the negativity behind us this is a, a safe space so everyone should feel comfortable with sharing their opinions and voicing their uh, their thoughts so with further without further ado y'all this is a little difficult this is not like recording a promotion video or anything i can edit out the cutscenes. <laughs> this is live so you might hear a couple mess ups and you might see some things on the blooper reel later after we <laughs> cut some things out and make some edits for the YouTube channel. But without further ado, I would like to introduce my good friend, brother of mine, a brother from another mother, Herson Sanchez. So real quick, Herson, can you um, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your story, yeah, how yeah, you got yeah. to where you are right now? Oh, uh, well, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited, my man. Pleasure, the man. first episode of Talented Tuesday. This is pretty dope, man. It's exciting. Uh, so my name is Herson Sanchez. Uh, I am a second year doctoral student at Florida National University working on my PhD in higher education and my focus is around race, racism and education, how that manifests and is perpetuated in education. And um, like you said, uh, great frat brother, just a great brother in general. And we met, um, we kind of met through the frat, I guess. Yeah, you could say that. Um, and then kind of find out he, he did poetry and, and I play a little bit of guitar. so. We just kind of started vibing on that, so. Strong duo. Mm -hmm. So, um, where do you see yourself um, musically? Like, what what brought you to where you are now, being the first guest of Talented Tuesdays? Oh man, uh, so I started playing uh, piano when I was five, and I grew up playing in church. Uh, I grew up playing in Spanish churches and black churches, so I just learned a lot of gospel music, jazz, Spanish music, all that stuff. And then I moved to Miami uh, about almost six years ago. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anyone when I moved here. Uh, so I was trying to find something to do, how to get to know people. So I bought a guitar. And like I said, I play piano. Um, and if anyone, anyone out there plays piano, they know that piano is a great first foundational instrument to learn. Um, so it other instruments become, become a little easier to kind of learn. Um, so I... Ended up getting a guitar, and I had no friends, had nothing to do. Uh, all I did was work. I would come back home and, and just kind of chill out. So I literally spent hours and hours and hours a day just trying to learn how to play guitar. And somehow I learned, and it worked out for me. Uh, so I used to gig a lot when I moved to Miami. So I started trying to gig with guitar, and that's kind of how I made my living. Um, I just got a lot of gigs on the South Beach, and yeah. Just playing. Wow. So like, yeah. it's, I'm just learning this for the first time. So you said like, <laughs> piano was like the first instrument that you learned. Yeah, like, yeah. I've only known you to be really good at playing the guitar. So. Yeah, yeah. So piano is like my first instrument. I feel more comfortable okay. on it. I've been playing since I was five, and I'm 29 now. Wow. That's so a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So did you did you share? Did you already share where you're from? And um, yeah, just yeah. Uh, so I'm from North Carolina. My family is from Central America, a country called Nicaragua. Um, yeah, very poor country. Uh, it was one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere until the Haitian earthquake a couple of years ago. Um, so just a very poor, poor country. And my parents live in North Carolina, and I live I live in Miami now, almost six years. So I did my master's here, and now I'm working on my PhD. Okay, what would you say like the culture, um, the culture was like living in Greensboro as compared to living in Miami now? Man, two different places, two different worlds. Uh, probably one of the, the biggest things that I've noticed is that Greensboro is very racially dichotomous. It's very kind of like most of the United States where 
it's white, black, and then everything else just kind of falls on the periphery. And Miami, if anything, will challenge, at least it challenged me, uh, challenged everything I knew about race and ethnicity. I, I grew up th learning that um, if you looked racially white, then you were a white person. If you looked racially black, you were a black person. But here, um, you add ethnicity to that mix a lot. So literally anyone can look like anything and they can be anyone. Like they could end up speaking French, only French. They can speak Spanish, only Spanish. Uh, so that thing, that think that was one of the biggest things that I noticed uh, for me and just kind of how I live my everyday life. Uh, just everything I knew about race and ethnicity was just kind of challenged. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Interesting. Uh, uh, growing up in Greensboro, did um, you, you said you played a lot in church and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, was yeah, your yeah. family mostly musically inclined too? That's how you learned how to play the music? Yeah. Um, so my dad plays guitar. My brother plays guitar. My sister plays uh, violin. She's really good. Um, and then I grew up playing piano and then I learned guitar later. Uh, but all my uncles and cousins, everyone plays something. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Music is just kind of something that we do. Yes. I could kind of relate to that. Like my dad, yeah. he's a singer. So like, oh, okay. yeah, he, he really likes to sing. So I never really could sing. So I tried to like fiddle with some instruments. You know, everybody learned how to play the, the, yeah, recorder. the recorder. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I can't really count that, but I yeah, will count. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I did play the drums for some time. Uh, was a part of a percussion unit and everything like that. And my sister uh, played the violin for some time. But you know, oh, cool. she, you know the older she got, she kind of like lost yeah, interest. Yeah, yeah. It. It's a, it's a, it takes patience to learn how to play the violin. That's what Man. I was gonna say. It's like learning a new language. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like a hand hand a little small guitar, but but you can only use the bow. Yeah, I ain't even gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a difficult instrument. So absolutely. Uh, one thing I will point out is just playing any instrument it takes a, a lot of. A lot Absolutely. of patience and a lot of Absolutely. will to actually want to learn how to play it well. It takes dedication, just like anything else, sacrifice, consistency. Um, even now, I still practice. I think last week I practiced maybe 10 hours. Like, just just like, on your own time, just practice 10 yeah, hours. Yeah, just like 10 hours just throughout the week. And, and it, for me, and I think a lot of musicians can say the same, it, we don't see it as work. It's just, it's just something that we just enjoy doing. We just kind of do it. And you kind of get lost in the music, um, which is pretty cool. Okay. So, uh, do you have any, like, short-term goals? Like, you know, you was playing gigs when you first yeah. got to Miami. Do you see yourself trying to obtain more gigs the further mm -hmm. along you go with playing the guitar? Or you just see yourself just enjoying it as a hobby? I, I think um, probably more as a hobby. So, I'm really busy with school. Uh, so, that doesn't really give me time to, to for gigs. So, a lot goes into a gig. Um, it's getting to know people, um, learning the music for the gigs, and I can't read music, so I play by ear. Mm -hmm. So everything I learn, I have to play it and replay it, or rewind it, or, you know, replay it again, trying to figure out the chords, the breaks, the notes. Um, and it just takes a lot to learn. It takes a lot of time. I played for um, as a Kojic church, Church of God in Christ, uh, and I played organ there. And... Uh, it literally took me at least anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a week just to learn the music. That's not including rehearsals that I had to go to and I had to play two services throughout the week. And when the choir traveled, I had to go with them. Uh, so that's just a lot. It's like a part-time job. Mm -hmm. So now I actually play for a church um, in South Miami. And I just show up Sunday mornings. We rehearse for 30 minutes. Church lasts about an hour and a half. And I get to go home. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like the only gig I have now. They do pay. So that's nice, and yeah, so I don't really see this going too much further, but it's just kind of nice to be able to play. Okay, and like, what's your favorite, do you have a favorite tune that you like to play, like a favorite style? Uh, well, probably Spanish music on guitar, like just, um, like Spanish music, uh, R&B, like acoustic R&B type stuff. On keyboard, on piano, uh, just kind of everything, R&B, neo soul. Uh, gospel music, a lot of gospel music, uh, of course, Spanish music. So, yeah, just stuff like that. Okay, so, like, do you have a... Did you look up to a certain musician that you might have learned a lot of your... Uh... Oh, man. You know what's interesting? I actually looked up a lot to, to gospel music when I was a kid because that was something that was foreign to me. It wasn't something I just grew up listening. I'll never forget, uh, my mom bought me a tape. I don't know if y'all know what a tape is, but a tape... Kind of like before CDs. Uh, you oh, know. Yeah, like a little cassette. Yeah, cassette yeah. tape. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 
And she got me a cassette tape because she knew I wanted to listen to gospel music. So this was before Spotify, before iTunes, before all this stuff, right? Um, and it was, uh, it was like shouting, there was shouting music on, on the cassette tape. And I didn't know what shouting music was. I was like, what is this? Like, what is happening? Like, why is that music, music so bad? Yeah, um, I don't know how to explain shot music. It's it's very uh, very much part of the black church. Um, uh, when, I guess when people feel the spirit or get excited, uh, there are or- chords that the organist or the keyboards will play, um, and uh, yeah, and it's called shot music. And uh, so I didn't know what this was as a kid, you know. And I grew up speaking Spanish, so I had to learn English as a second language. So there was just a lot of confusion going on in my head. And um, I, I learned how to play uh, this gospel music, shot music. And I think that was something that I really looked up to uh, just because it was so different from what I was used to. And it was very challenging just to kind of learn how to play. So I think that's, I looked up to genres, I think, more than actual musicians. That's interesting. Um, okay, so if you could, if you could rewind back 10, 10 years of your life and know everything that you know now, would you rather rewind that 10 years or would you rather fast forward 10 years with an additional $5 million in your bank account? What would you rather do? Okay, this is a tough one. You said if I could rewind 10 you, years. Yeah, if you could go back 10 years, okay, but still know everything that you know now. Okay. Or would you rather fast forward 10 years and have $5 million? Fast forward $5 million, huh? Uh, that's, okay, I'd probably go back. You'll probably go back? 10 years. Yeah, because I'd probably end up making those $5 million. You'd probably well, make with, exactly. with everything I know now. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. Yeah, I was say, with everything yeah. you know now, it would definitely be like a genius. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would, I would, that would be pretty cool. But hey, you know, we have the present, and that's what we got to work with. Yeah. Present and the future, so. Right, 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 right. right. Um, okay. That was just like a little, yeah, little yeah, icebreaker. Yeah, yeah, man, that was Probably awesome. something I should have did at the beginning. Threw me off a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. All right, okay. here go another icebreaker. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you won the lottery. Mm-hmm. What do you see yourself doing with your uh, your winnings? Oh, this is interesting. Um, it's crazy. Someone asked me the other day what I do. What would I do with a million dollars? And I told them I would never want to have a million dollars. And I and they were just didn't understand that. And I told them that if I ha- if I ever reach a million dollars, it's because I haven't done enough for my community. Um, so there's always an outpour that I could have been kind of giving out. Um, so if I were to win the lottery, even though I'm kind of against. The, the idea of the lottery because it's mm-hmm. usually poor people who are buying these tickets and it's it's kind of it's like a pyramid yeah, yeah. Um, so that if I were to do that I'd, I'd definitely build I don't know I try to find ways to multiply it for my community build mm-hmm. community centers for children uh, single mothers uh, one of my dreams is actually to open up um, a car shop for uh, young kids and single mothers to come get free work um, done on their cars and vehicles. So I'd probably open up something like that. That's a, that, yeah. you might be the first person yeah. ever to, to, I don't know many places yeah. that offer free cars. Yeah, it would be free, it would be like free, that. yeah. Too many people out here taking advantage of folks, so I don't, I don't really get down with that. Okay, so would you, uh, I, after all, this is Talented Tuesdays. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, our talents inspire our youth. So, oh, okay. So, yeah. what words do you have for the youth, or what message would you like to share for the youth to, you know, keep them going? Because a lot of times we have people who we have we have something that we're really passionate about. We have people sure. who tell us, you know, that's not practical. Try a different route. Uh, what's the message that you might give to some of those uh, young kids that may have struggles uh, trying to figure out what exactly they want to do? Oh man, that's a that's a loaded question. Um, that's a that's a really tough question, I think, to answer. Uh, uh, just because it, it it presupposes a lot of things that our children have access to, to a lot of these things. But in, if they do have access, um, I would really encourage them just to give something a, a shot, give something an opportunity. Um, I I didn't think playing music was cool when I was a kid. Like that wasn't cool to me. I wanted to play sports, but I was short, so I couldn't play ball. You know, I couldn't play football. I was like 80 pounds in the eighth grade, you know. Um, so music was a way for me to kind of express myself. It was also a way to keep me out of trouble. So if if our children have access to these things, I would highly encourage them just to find find something that you're passionate about. I think church, um, and we can talk about the complexities around church, but I think 
especially um, in minority communities, it has always been a type of community center for our children and our people. And I think that that is a great way, great place to kind of start learning how to play music, to work on um, kind of like public speaking, to do a lot of things, to learn about community service. So I think uh, I would encourage young people just to kind of get involved, uh, just any way they can. Uh, find a musician, an artist, a poet, or someone that you like. Go talk to them, ask them what, you know, how they start doing what they're doing. Um, and I, but I also think it w works both ways. I also think that we should also be doing the same thing um, with our children. And so, yeah, that's kind of my opinion on that. I think, yeah. I think the biggest point that you made that really hit home for not only myself, but for yeah. a lot of young kids was, you didn't think that it was cool to play, uh, yeah. to play a guitar oh, or not. any kind of instrument. It was and super whack, yeah. I remember for myself, like growing up, since middle school, I didn't think it was really cool that our English teacher had us like writing poems and he would try and get us to like volunteer to read our poems out loud. And yeah. I kind of was just like, I knew what, as I'm writing, I was like, I kind of like this. But anytime he asked me to read it out loud, I was like, you know, I don't really, I don't really feel comfortable. I don't really want to do that. I don't want anyone thinking I'm like a, uh, Ponzi or, or whatever. A so Ponzi? Like, is that like Philly slang? Yeah, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> it was the first thing that came to my mind. Like I said, we live, so y'all gonna catch a lot of my bloopers. But so, yeah, so I didn't really think it was cool to really share my poetry. So yeah. then as I got older, I, I kind of started to warm up to it. Even in high school, I didn't, I didn't, I was still kind of shy and timid about yeah. uh, my writing and everything like that. And I mostly was writing about my experiences. Uh, being at a, a predominantly white high school and then just being like one of six black kids in the classroom and I was mostly writing about that experience yeah, yeah. so I definitely wasn't sharing it because I didn't feel as though it was my place to even share mm. yeah, uh, yeah. what was going on so um, as I got to college I saw that Cheney University had an organization called CUPS which mm -hmm. was Cheney University Poetry uh, and Song uh, I forget what the other S means but basically that was students that gathered to, uh, gathered together without like administration or anything like that. That just wanted an mm. organization where they can come meet in a circle, share like raps, songs that they wrote, poetry, anything that was like creative expression. And once I saw that, I was kind of like, no, this is, is this is more than just a handful of people. This is a lot of people in this in this group that are comfortable with sharing their 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 expressions that they yeah. poured their hearts out into. I was like, you know what? I think now might be my time to be a little bit more comfortable with that and ever since it's helped me a lot better with being a public speaker and just being more comfortable with my emotions sharing my emotions with people and being more open to having conversations with people it i think that when i say our talents inspire our youth i really truly mean that as as far as our talents are what gets our um our youth really going in and, and motivated because you know Absolutely. a lot of us follow behind what we hear on the radio and what we see on TV. These are all talents, whether or not we we use it for a negative impact or a positive impact. Absolutely. Playing basketball is a talent, football is a Absolutely. talent, rapping is a talent. So it's like our our youth really look up to these talents, and this is who they want to emulate, and this is what they want to model after. Yeah. So if we can learn how to reverse those talents and put it more towards a positive impact, where we can create more creators. Mm -hmm. Then I feel as though we'll be on the right track. And I, I mean, I, I definitely agree with everything you're saying. And I would also add that maybe um, rethinking the way we, we conceptualize the idea of a talent, right? And a lot of things can be talent. And I, th I think one of the, as a person who's in education, one of the biggest things I see in education is that we lack expectations for our children, right? And you oftentimes see this happen uh, racially, along racial lines, or around class lines, around gender lines. Um, and one thing I, I would say is always encourage our children um, to, and, and encourage them say, hey, you can do this too, right? This is not out of your, out of your league. You, you can you can be a chemistry person. That is, I think I think that's a talent that I definitely don't have. Yeah, that's a talent. Um, so I think a lot of things can be uh, I think reframed as talents that were children. And, and I think that psychologically um, can have a, a positive psychological psychological effect on our children ultimately um so i definitely agree with everything you're saying um yeah i wish i would see more more young people like us out in the community you know florida is number uh i think 48 in the state um for young people who give back or doing work in their community 
Oh, you, like you mean Miami specifically? No, like the entire state of Florida. Oh, like as a whole, like young people uh, in college were number forty eighth in the country. Oh, okay, okay. Um, sorry, yeah, in the country um, for people who give back. Wow. So yeah, people aren't doing service, so, which I think is. And to go back to your your previous point, Wolf, we have to do a better job of encouraging our youth to want to get out and test the waters with different kind of uh, oh yeah creations. Uh, that just goes back to what I said earlier about like how uh, sometimes as parents, I'm not a parent, but sometimes as parents, you notice that uh, we might tell our kids like, you know, I know you really want to do this, but I think you should go to school to do this. And I think you should try that because it's more practical. You'll have a better chance of making yeah, more yeah, money. Yeah. And I know back to what Herson was talking about with on a class line, that is um, we kind of make our decisions based off of how much money that we can make off of this skill, how much uh, basically money. That's that's really the only example I can really think of. But if we try to fuel our use um, creative mind to where we are creating creators, then I, I, ideally we don't have anything much that we can worry about because we're creating opportunities for not only ourselves but for each other. Absolutely, I, I definitely definitely agree with that. So, Absolutely. Well, that's really all the questions that I have. I okay. didn't really see anyone else asking okay, any cool, questions. Cool, cool, cool. I left. Uh, do you think it's helped or hurt? Okay, so Cody has asked you. Do you think that your nationality has helped or hurt your uh, your music career? Ah, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, Hmm. Okay, um, I don't know. Um, music is a weird thing uh, where and we can trace this historically where music uh, not even the camera dog too. Oh man, I'm slacking. Uh, uh, where historically uh, music has allowed people to do and enter certain spaces that they other, otherwise would not be granted. Conversely, we've also seen music be ripped away from people and used for uh, someone else's gain. Rather take pics and blow splits, that shit retarded. They cannot keep us down, but they try their hardest. I'ma strive regardless. Buying Jordans doesn't buy your freedom. They shame my name as I try to teach them. Our self respect has been lost, man. I'm tired of preaching. Eureka. Cause see, the magic is that I'm the magic kid. Throw away the lies, passing books out just like magic did. I write these words for my people's freedom. I write these words to try and teach the kingdom. I jot these words to stop my people's beats. I jot these words to stop my people's bleed. Cause see, the reason is why they shoot my people's dead. Call yourself a nigga, but that's why my people's bled. They trying to office before we find ourselves. They hide behind the wealth and systems like the Commonwealth. They strong black boys, it's not a racist if you learn to love yourself. Stand strong, learn how to find yourself. Be yours.